A brand new season at the Meadowlands Racetrack, the winter racing season underway. And from what we're told, wagering is up a lot. Joining us now, the chairman of the new Meadowlands Racetrack, Jeff Corral. Pleasure to have you back with us. Thanks, Mike. Uh, tell me about the numbers. The numbers have been uh, amazing. We're, we're up. Uh, we actually bet more last Saturday. They bet more on a normal card than they did last year on the Meadowlands Pace Night, which is our biggest night. So, uh, what do you make of that? What, what, what's behind well, that? Well, we're trying some different things. Uh, I, I met some big gamblers who, who've agreed to bet on our product. And what we've learned is that the more people bet, it like feeds on itself because um, if, you, if you have a big handle and you want to make a bet, it doesn't affect the odds. A lot of harness mm -hmm. tracks have uh, small handles. So if someone wants to bet $200 to win, and the horse is six to one. They bet two hundred dollars, and the horse is two to five. Changes things dramatically. Changes things yeah. dramatically. Where so at the metal you, ends, you can do that. When you say you met some big gamblers, uh, from the outside looking in, I don't know what that means. What does it mean? Well, some people came to me and they said, uh, uh, you know, we, we bet thirty thousand dollars a day at your track. Uh, maybe we'll bet three hundred thousand dollars a day if we can negotiate a better deal for ourselves because mm -hmm. the way it works today uh, the biggest bettors get rebates mm -hmm. from the tracks makes sense you know be like someone going to a car and saying uh, instead of buying one car I'll buy 20 cars but I want a better price on on each car is it kind of like when uh, the, the regular customers at the casinos get comped exactly yeah. it's the same concept that the, the people who bet the most uh, get get a rebate and that's fairly common the, the, the unfortunately most of the wagering is done off track it's done on computers it's done at other racetracks on uh, uh, people in their homes betting on uh, on the internet watching on TV so um, that's where it's changed a lot which is interesting because you were very critical of last month when New Jersey's uh, assembly voted for the uh, online uh, casino gambling bill you called it outrageous well I'm just a normal, sane person, and, and these are my friends in the assembly. I don't want to, but, and I, I think, I think, you know, internet poker, that's a game of skill, but why would you let people bet, play slot machines from their bedroom on a computer? What we've seen in racing is that it's devastated the racetracks. The racetracks are empty. So, for example, of the three and a half million dollars that was bet at the Meadowlands Saturday night, 3.2 was bet on computers and someplace else, only 300,000. So I, I think, A, it makes a compulsive gambler, you're like, uh, duh, you know, mm -hmm. how, about, how about we put a slot machine in your bedroom? And B, I think it'll hurt the jobs down in Atlantic City. It doesn't bring anybody into the facilities themselves. I don't think themselves. so. I mean, I, I don't see it. You're in the process now. Uh, I guess I've heard that you're maybe seven or eight months away from the, the new grandstand being opened up, is that correct? Yeah, what we're going to do next year, we're going to change things around a little, and we're actually going to open the week before Thanksgiving and uh, in the new grandstand. What we've learned from the first year is that we actually do better in the, in the off-season. I think, uh, as we've heard, people in Jersey in the summer go to the Jersey Shore, mm -hmm. and I think they like the Jersey Shore, but you know, when we're open, when it's not the summer, I think we're one of the you know, things, uh, entertainment options that people have. So what we learned uh, is that people actually like it better uh, in, the, in, the, in the winter, in the fall. So we're going to, rather than race on Thursdays like we're doing now, we're going to race fewer Thursdays and more weekends, and we're going to start uh, right before Thanksgiving and, and then go from there. Seeing what you've seen thus far since you've taken over operations at that track, what's the biggest surprise? I guess the biggest surprise was that you do better in the winter than the summer. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, just, uh, you know, Are people... Are you glad you did it? Am I glad I did it? Yeah. I don't know. It's an awful lot of work. You know, I'm, I'm 70 years old and working harder now than I ever worked. So you kind of envision your life at 70 as being a little slower because in my real estate business, my son and my nephew, you know, kind of run that. Mm -hmm. And I, I, here I really don't, you know, I've got a terrific team at the Meadowlands now, Jason mm -hmm. Settlemore and, and Darren Zakali. I've got the right people in place. It sounds to me like you're saying, though, that this, in a way, when it comes to your career with the horses, this is perhaps your biggest challenge. There's no doubt it's my biggest challenge. And, you know, the one good thing for me is I really sort of control the sport because the Meadowlands is the dominant uh, track in the sport of harness racing. So um, I kind of, I have a lot of ideas 
And the fact that I'm not a casino company, I think, helps because I'm, I'm, I've got to come up with ways to get people to come and bet on horse racing. You're still hopeful for that casino element to come on in to your, to your shop, though, aren't you? Yeah, I, I think, in fairness, it would, I probably wouldn't have done it if I didn't think that at some point down the road the state will figure out that there should be a casino at the Meadowlands. And then whether I'm the operator or not, that's a different story. But I, I just don't think they're going to allow people to just go to New York and, New, New, and Pennsylvania forever. Um, People are, are during the week. It's convenient. Gas is four dollars. Mm -hmm. You know, why do you want to drive? I, I think Atlantic City. I think the governor's right to try to save Atlantic City, but obviously, uh, the revel has been a major, shockingly major disappointment. And I think they've got their work cut out for them. You know, and hopefully, maybe we can work together in the future, and we can help them. Because as I've said publicly, we would pay uh, a much higher tax rate. So we would pay three hundred fifty million dollars a year to the state and all of the casinos combined in Atlantic City only pay about 220 million. So you would think somehow there's a way that we could work together on this. Let's check back and see how that somehow comes someday, perhaps. Jeff, thanks for coming in. Okay, anytime, Mike.